Hello everyone, so today we're going to look at how we perform a migration in an existing Red Hat OpenShift cluster from OpenShift SDN or OVN Kubernetes to the Cilium CNI itself. And this is based on a blog post that I wrote for vhk.co.uk and you can go straight to that blog post at this link here. So uh, bit.ly forward slash OCP hyphen migrate hyphen Cilium. So Cilium is uh, the kind of leading CNI technology as part of the CNCF foundation. It's the first CNI to actually achieve graduation status as well. I'm not going to dive into all of the bells and whistles and features and so forth today, um, but there's so much content online that you can consume to understand that. You can get across to the iSurveillant uh, YouTube channel or their blogs or go to Cilium.io for the open source information as well. Before we dive into this, one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is around the portability side of using Cilium with Red Hat OpenShift as well. So first and foremost, Cilium, whether it's the open source or the enterprise equivalent, are both uh, certified. They have available OpenShift operators and they go through the rigorous process that Red Hat have designed as part of their operator program to make that happen. Um, and to do that, you create something called uh, an OLM or Operator Lifecycle Manager, um, if I can remember the terminology correctly there. Um, so from that point of view, running Cilium inside of your Red Hat uh, OpenShift environment fully supported um, and obviously a fantastic idea from a feature set point of view as well. However, when it comes to the migration of an existing running productionized cluster of OpenShift, this is where it gets a little bit into a gray area. So uh, Red Hat don't actually produce any documentation on this. If you read their guidance, they explain that if you want to use any third-party CNI, uh, they point you through how to do that as part of the stand-up of a brand new cluster. And the only time you see guidance from Red Hat to migrate a live running environment is if you're moved from OpenShift SDN to OVN Kubernetes. So a quick word of warning there that probably going to be doing this, uh, supporting it yourself and understanding the pitfalls of doing that as well. But by all means, for any of you that are looking at doing this in a production house environment, do work with your Red Hat account and support teams first and foremost before you achieve anything. Um, I have known a number of large customers out there that are OpenShift customers who have actually uh, performed this migration themselves from scratch and been very successful with it as well, which was the basis for the information in the blog post as well. And then just to give you a quick view, so this is the blog post that I've been referencing, a little bit of an overview of uh, Cilium itself, um, about the possibility we just talked about, the prerequisites. So I'm going to be using existing OpenShift cluster that I've, uh, that I've already set up and running. Uh, some considerations there around things like QProxy, if you're running an older OpenShift environment that's just been updated in the background there. Um, deploying sample applications, kind of walk you through that as well. So you could use this guide in, for example, your development or test lab environments here. So you can actually run through this process yourself and understand fully how it works and then decide what is the best uh, option for you to start consuming Cilium inside of your OpenShift clusters going forward. Okay, so let's start diving into uh, our OpenShift environment. So first and foremost, let's clear that information up there from when I was getting everything sorted in the background. As I mentioned, I've already created a OpenShift cluster in the background. Um, I just used the wizard for this as well. Um, so I can show you a cleaned version of my install config file. And I just did OpenShift hyphen install uh, create cluster and let it create that manifest in the background for me as well. Um, so essentially here by default from OpenShift 4.12, OVN Kubernetes is the default network type. Uh, anything older than that, it would have been OpenShift SDN. Uh, OVN Kubernetes is where they're putting the majority of their effort at developing features going forward. Um, there's not too much else in here that's kind of particularly stands out now. Um, we've got obviously our API. Um, and ingress, this is still going to be used and available. Um, we're not kind of going to make any more changes to that. But one of the things that we need to kind of know is understand 
what networks we have put in place, things like the cluster network, machine network, and service networks. When we migrate to Cilium, we need to uh, give it a network for pod IP addresses that does not conflict with the existing uh, uh, CNI that's in place as well. And then eventually we'll change this network type and tell OpenShift that, hey, the network type is now Cilium going forward. Okay, so I think the first and foremost, like all good systems, what we want to do here is we want to deploy maybe a test application that we can consume uh, going forward just so we can actually see what happens in the background as well, especially for this demo environment. So I'm going to use an application called Goldpinger. Um, I've created my own little uh, gist for this, um, but you can just go directly to the GitHub page of the app. If I just go back to the blog as well, you can see that here. Um, and this is the GitHub page for Goldpinger. Uh, it's published as open source from the company Bloomberg, and it's used to uh, as a debugging tool for Kubernetes uh, for network tests and displays connectivity between nodes as well, which is really handy. Um, one of the other things to kind of note about this process is it is disruptive to your environment because it does require you to reboot your OpenShift nodes. And of course, if you're on applications in that, that aren't highly available for whatever reason or suffer from an outage, we can take those pods down. Pod uh, life migration is, is not a thing yet inside of OpenShift, inside the, the versions of Kubernetes that are available today. Uh, I know it's been worked on uh, in the future because I saw that as at one of the sessions at KubeCon the previous year as well. Uh, but it does mean that you, you would have some sort of outage. So let's uh, expose our gold pink service as well. Um, so basically, we're going to use the kind of routes that are available inside of OpenShift. It's going to give it a host name, and that's just going to use my FQDN of my cluster in the background as well. If I just get pod so we can see all of the gold pinger running. And if I open uh, a remote desktop connection, and I just drag that across, we can see here this is my uh, just uh, jump box with browser access as well into that cluster. And we can see here we've got all of the nodes running, and we can see where, where that's coming from. And if I click on one of these um, we can also see things like pod ip address for example and this can be really important later on because at the end of the process i'm going to show you when Cilium's running these pods and the nodes have been rebooted and this pod ip is going to change to the network um, that we specified when we installed Cilium as well okay so moving on <laughs> So one of the things that we'll need to do as well is we'll need to uh, clone the GitHub repo with the Cilium OLM in as well. So we'll just do git clone uh, github.com. It's in the isovalent uh, uh, profile, and then it's called OLM for Cilium, and this is for the open source version. If you're interested in the Cilium enterprise version, then if you go through the isovalent enterprise documentation, there's a link in there for those files as well. I've, of course, already uh, had this downloaded in my environment in the background, ready as well. So I won't do that again. So the first thing that we need to do inside our environment is we now need to start by disabling a couple of the management components inside of OpenShift as well. So the first thing is going to be the cluster version operator, which looks at the configurations that are generated for cluster operators and then keeps them in sync with that as well. Because we're going to be making changes to the network operator, we want to make sure that none of this is reconciled until we're happy to do so. Because again, this uh, is going to be a slow process and we will want to manage those outages when we reboot nodes, for example, as well. Also as well with certain things, some of these configurations could be overwrote because they differ from the current set configuration in place by one of the operators as well. So again, all of these files and all the commands that I'm running through are in the blog post as well. Um, so we're going to create a file. I'm just going to disable the cluster version network operator, um, and then we're going to use the OC patch command to put that in place as well. So there we go. So that's my cluster version operator patched. And that's basically just going to unmanage the network operator itself. This now allows me to essentially disable fully the network operator from running. So now what I can do is scale that down to zero. If it was still managed by the cluster version operator, I'd be able to pass the command scale to zero, but then it's going to be reverted back to whatever the original configuration is. 
So now if we check in that namespace, we can see that there are no pods running because it's obviously scaled them down, which is fantastic. And now what we want to do is we want to delete the applied cluster config map from the network operator namespace. That deletes all the information, the history that it has of what that configuration has been applied. And another important step is we also want to pause the machine configuration pools for both our master and our worker nodes as well. Um, that then stops the nodes from being automatically reconciled or rebooted by the machine configuration pool. Now, in previous older versions, when I've been work talking to colleagues, uh, some of these commands will generate this when you unpause it, would actually reboot those nodes straight away. In my testing in my lab, that didn't quite happen the way I expected. I had to manually reboot the nodes. I don't know if that's a change from kind of the Red Hat configuration or whether it's just something that I did when I was testing this out as well. But again, it's kind of good to know that I can pause and manage that process myself anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to clear this screen a little bit for everyone and the next command that we're going to put is we're going to patch the network config against the cluster so we're going to merge in there we're going to change that specification so we want to update the cluster network uh, to a new side so this is going to be used for the pods now i'm going to use 10.244.004/16 and the reason for that is because that's what's going to be configured inside of my Cilium configuration as well and i'll show you that in a couple of steps in a moment um, we're obviously changing the network type to Cilium itself and we're removing any status that is there as well um now if i go to the next command we're going to update the network operator if you are viewing this through uh, the blog post you may actually think these two commands look very similar apart from the difference being is the network uh, sorry the cube proxy is disabled here um the obviously be aware that you need to apply both configs because we're patching both the network configuration and the network operator itself as well and essentially we're making sure that both of those configurations are in sync with one another at the network operator level we want to ensure that queue proxy is disabled and not deployed going forward and then we'll also ensure that cilium is set to replace any queue proxy configuration now in later overshift versions queue proxy is not deployed so this configure uh, everything we're doing today works for overshift stm for example where you can have queue proxy available if you're using OVN Kubernetes, then there is no Kube proxy anyway. Um, even if you migrated from uh, OVN Kubernetes, I'd recommend that you put this in just to make sure that kind of uh, nothing happens in the background as well that you weren't expecting. <laughs> so we're kind of ready now to deploy Cilium into our environment. So to get those Cilium pods up and running, start using that eBPF-based technology. But before you do that, you remember before we downloaded the OLM files and we need to go into those OLM files and configure them as well. So if I um, just show you the structure of this first. So if I go to OLM, uh, OLM for so you can see all the base files and essentially all the files that we want to uh, apply are in a manifest folder inside of that repository. And essentially you've got manifest available for every version of Cilium. Now today we're going to use the latest version, which is 1.14.5 as part of this video. Um, and inside of there, you've got a number of uh, files that would split, uh, that configure Cilium for you. So again, if I just, uh, oh, there we go, we'll do it that way. Um, so we've got obviously the CIDs that are configured, it configures the namespace, the various service accounts, um, various OLM cluster roles, um, operator groups, the subscription to that operator as well, so it could be updated in the future. But the one that you need to edit yourselves is this Cilium config file at the end here, the 07 file. So by default, it will have some configuration in there for you out of the box, but then there will be other areas that you would need to configure as well, because this essentially is the EU enabling the features of Cilium inside of this file. So I was going to run a less command on that file as well. So essentially the two areas that we need to, or three areas rather, that we need to make sure are configured up front are these three. So we want to make sure that the queue proxy replacement is set to strict. We want to set our case service host. So that's um, my uh, server address and the port that's available as well. So you can get that uh, from doing the OC config command uh, and just, just run the minify on that as well to get there. 
the cluster pool IPs that we talked about for the pod ciders is set here. Now, in older versions of Cilium, you would be using uh, the highlighted word in front of you, cluster pool, IPv4, pod, cider. Um, for in my 1.14.5 testing, I had to actually add, append the word list to that because of a change uh, of this going forward. Then there's a other configuration I might want to add in. So for today, I kept it kind of really, really simple, but I have enabled Hubble in the background as well because I thought it'd be really cool just to end the demo showing some eBPF-based network flow data being grabbed uh, from Cilium as well displayed in my environment. Um, if you want a copy of this particular configuration, then again, I've posted it in the blog post for you. So we're going to uh, exit out there, and then we're just going to apply the files as well. Um, so one of the things that you may see in your environment here is that the resource mapping uh, is not found and you can't apply that configuration file. And essentially it's because the CRDs are still being created in the background. So you may actually have to apply this twice for it to take effect. So we'll just do that a second time. And there we go. That second time here, we can see that it's created. Um, the cluster version service will be configured because it updates uh, its revision that it gets, but everything else will kind of stay the same from before. So you will have to apply that twice in most cases. Okay, so the next command then we're going to do is if I'm going to do a watch on this as well, and we're going to watch the Cilium uh, pods and containers come up and running. Okay, so that didn't actually take too long to get up and running, which is fantastic. And notice here that like the OLM uh, may kind of restart itself and so forth whilst it checks and brings everything into line as well. Um, but essentially, it shouldn't take too long to get that up and running. Obviously, it depends as well where you bring this from. For those of you that are running in an air gapped environment, you may again need to edit the manifest files to point to your air gapped um, image registry so that you can apply this as well and download those from your internal register. So I'm just going to exit out of here. So now we've got to this point, we want to scale the network operator again. So we want to bring that back up and running. Um, and we also want to remove any override from the cluster version operator as before as well, because now we've actually installed Cilium. We've told the uh, OpenShift cluster that we want to use Cilium going forward. We're kind of almost there with it. We also now want to uh, remove the paused effects from our machine config pool. And then we should get to this point here where if I show uh, get CW, we can see what's happening uh, with each of the workers. So you can watch this going forward um, or you can uh, just keep replaying it back. So again, I'm just going to clear this for a quick second. And then, oh, there we go. So we can see here that I've got three accounts. I've got uh, three, sorry, masters, two worker nodes. Um, we can see it's now in an updating true status and that it is not finished updating. And in my environment, when I was testing this, it kind of just sat here for quite a while and kind of didn't actually go anywhere in particular. Um, there's a couple of ways to gracefully restart uh, the Upshift nodes. So when I originally tested this, I went through the mode of uh, cordoning the nodes and draining the nodes from all of the pods and then SSHing into them and then uh, rebooting them. Um, you can also do that through a debug pod. So that's also listed in the official OpenShift documentation how to gracefully restart that. Um, however, in the OpenShift uh, documentation to migrate from OpenShift SDN to uh, OVN Kubernetes, they also give you this command. Okay, so with this command from that blog, uh, from that documentation from Red Hat, uh, let's see if we can reboot all of our nodes. Okay, so we can now see that these are all scheduled for reboot. And actually, this is going to uh, reboot what looks like all of my nodes at once, which is going to be quite fun. So you probably obviously want to kind of do this in a more controlled fashion going forward, like what the method in the blog post, which is you go on a uh, card and, and drain the nodes and so forth as well. But this is my demo test lab environment. I'm not too fast. So we'll come back to this in about 10, 15, 20 minutes and see how we get on. Okay, so... Um, 
the clusters been updated all of the nodes have kind of cycled through uh, going into not ready status schedule and disabled and so forth i just put a watch command on this you could do the hyphen w at the end so you could actually see it printed out into the terminal itself which might be a little bit better to track everything it took around about 25 minutes for just those five nodes to be done in the correct order and at times whilst this watch command was connected i could see um at one point definitely that the api stopped responding because that api pod uh obviously had nowhere else to be rescheduled at the time as well as the node it was running on was rebooted as well uh so let's come out of that uh, and in the background so whilst i was running i was also just checking what was happening with the cilium pods as well so again if we do oc get pods in the space of cilium <laughs> should see that everything's uh, running as well. And you might see a couple of like restarts on the operator and OEM as well. So let's clear all of that out. So one of the things that we also want to do is we probably want to check, make sure that all pods inside of our environment now are running. Uh, and one of the things that we could do, which is quite handy as well, is we could actually sort that by node name so we could figure out if there's particular nodes that are having problems rather than just pods themselves as well. Um, very quickly, we can see nothing has an error status here, which is really good. Um, oh, so we've got a contain status unknown here for one of the installers as well. So that's fine. That will reconcile itself shortly anyway. Um, that was the last node uh, that was rebooting, I believe. So let's carry on down. Yeah, everything else looks quite healthy. We'll just double check the cluster operators. We want to make sure that all the cluster operators show true. Of course, we've only uh, changed one and configured, reconfigured one, which was the network cluster operator. But of course, again, the full cluster has been rebooted. Uh, those cluster operators have got to come back online. They've got to sync up with uh, OpenShift as well, uh, Marketplace to make sure there's no updates and so forth from there. And then the final thing we can do is we're just going to do, uh, delete the OpenShift Kubernetes uh, namespace because we don't need OVN Kubernetes anymore because we've migrated. So we're just going to wait for that to complete. So that didn't take too long. So now before I move any further, if you remember at the start of this recording, I went into something called NodePinger. So I'm going to go back to NodePinger and this was the old IP addresses of those pods. I'm going to refresh that as well. Um, and then we're going to go back to the same pod here again. And then if I just click on this, and now we can see here that the pod IP has moved to 10.244.3.29. And that 10.244 is part of that range that we used for Cilium previously as well. And then if I click off there, we can all see that all the nodes are pinging once again to one another with no errors. Um, so that's fantastic. But we don't have to just stop there with our network tests. The great thing about using Cilium is there's a number of network tests that we can run on our environment to see what's happening as well. Um, so I am going to install those now uh, because of the security concept uh, context constraints that are in place inside of OpenShift. We do need to create one uh, for the OpenShift, uh, so for the Cilium test to run inside of OpenShift. So we're going to do that again. And as before, everything that I've copied and pasted here in the screen, don't worry about writing down, is in the blog post. So now I've done that. Um, we are going to apply this file that I've just created. And then now we can create a namespace. And we'll call that cilium.test and then we're going to apply the connectivity checks as well and then what we're looking for here is we're looking for all of these pods to be downloaded and be in a running status and um, there's a number of health um li liveness health checks that are in there and basically if, if those fail then the pods won't run which then shows that as an error message something with inside of the environment here is, is kind of not running at all i've also just realized i actually did this to the wrong namespace as well um i did it to the silly namespace so let's do that again to the right place um, there we go. That looks more like what I was expecting to see. As we can see here, we've got some echoes between uh, pods, between to hosts, across multi-node environments. Uh, we create and install some uh, Cilium network policies, which are enhanced on top of Kubernetes network policies, uh, and check that those work. Um, and you can go to the Cilium.io documentation, and that'll tell you a bit more about how all those tests interact with one another. So we know that works. Um, 
Okay, so all that's left to do uh, really is just show you one of my favorite components of Cilium itself, which is the uh, Hubble components. That's getting network flow information uh, and even details about your application so far from uh, that eBPF data plane that's installed as part of Cilium. Uh, now we can expose this as part of a service, but we need to change some of the ports to do that. And that would be the better way to do it inside of an OpenShift environment. If you use any other sort of Kubernetes environment, then you just probably use something like the kubectl port forward command. To make it really quick and easy, I'm just gonna use the port forward command inside of my environment as well. Um, so we can see that up and running. And now if I do Hubble observe, I can now see all of this really cool data um, from my environment. So at the minute, I'm just looking at everything. So we can see the uh, nodes responding back to the gold pinger, uh, uh pod. We can see that there's some uh, traffic here from an IPv6 point of view that's unsupported, so it's being dropped. Um, we can see some OAuth API services going on, uh, and they're going to an external location on side of my network. Um, let's keep going down. What else can we see? Uh, we can see some Prometheus things going on uh, to another. I think that's probably a node inside of my environment as well before I dig into it. But this is straight away out of the box without me having to kind of change, edit, um, do anything different inside of my environment. And here we can actually even see the Hubble relay um going back to the cube api servers and to other hosts on side of the network as well as part of this open shift cluster so again all of this is available out of the box without me having to configure or change anything as well again the more you configure you use things like uh selling network policies so forth the rich that data becomes as well but let's uh finish the demo there uh thank you so much for your time today as mentioned you can follow everything here at this link but yeah Thank you so much. We'll see you again soon.